In this task, you will deploy a new fungible token on Hedera token service and transfer it from one account to another. You will be using the Hedera SDK and use JavaScript. No solidity or smart contracts necessary. Hi, I'm Brendan, DevRel engineer at Hashgraph, and I'll be walking you through this task. Please do follow along as you watch this video, as this is intended to be hands-on. All you need are a browser and a GitHub account. To do so, simply visit github.com slash Hedera dev slash Hedera tokens CYOA tutorial, or scan the QR code on the screen now. This is part of the choose your own adventure style Hedera tokens tutorial, where you'll learn how to mint and transfer tokens, the EVM way, the Hedera native way, and even another interoperable way with both at the same time. Let's switch to the git pod instance that we have previously set up. Let's begin this task by opening the file tokenhts slash script tokenhts.js. This is the script that we are going to run. Go to the terminal and enter the following commands cd token dash hts. Then type dot slash script, then press tab for autocomplete, followed by return. This starts running the script. Note the import statements at the top where we're making use of the Hedera SDK library. You will see some initial output that indicates the script has started running and confirmation that it has parsed some of the information from the .n file. Next, you will see a line in purple with a line underneath it saying, hit the return key when ready to proceed. These pause the execution of the script to make it easy to follow along with what is being run, specifically so that you can match up which lines of code are about to be executed next. For example, the logger lines which correspond to the output in the terminal. Next up, we'll be configuring the new HTS token. For this, we'll use token create transaction from the Hedera SDK. Each of the chain methods underneath it, underneath it set specific properties of the token that is about to be created. The set token type method is the most consequential as it determines whether you get a fungible token similar to ERC20 or a non-fungible token similar to ERC721. The set token name and set token symbol methods set the name and symbol properties. These are display properties of the token. In other words, what you will see, for example, in a wallet's user interface or a block explorer's user interface. The set initial supply method is used to set the amount of tokens that will be minted, and the set decimals method is used to set how precisely dividable the token should be. Here, with 1 million for initial supply and 2 for decimals, we're expecting 10,000 units. Think of it as similar to 1 million cents being the same as $10,000. The setTreasuryAccountID method sets the account which will receive the initial supply of the tokens upon mint, in this case, the main operator account. The setAdminKey method sets the account which will be able to modify the properties or configuration of the token after the mint. In this case, we're using the private key of a different account. What all of this does is to create a transaction and we extract a transaction ID from this and print that. For EVM developers, this is equivalent to a transaction hash. Hit return to run the section. You'll see that this happens instantly because nothing has happened on the network. This transaction only exists locally. Now we have our local transaction. It is ready to be submitted to the network. To do so, we'll need to first sign it using the private keys of the account involved, then submit it to the network, then await a transaction receipt. Hit return to run the section. In this case, both the operator account and the admin account need to sign this transaction, thanks to both of them being involved in the token create configuration. Therefore, we have a multi-sig going on here. To do so, we'll use the sign transaction method with each of the private keys, then use the add signature method twice on the token create transaction and obtain a signed transaction. Subsequently, we use the execute method on the signed transaction to get a submitted transaction. This means that the Hedera testnet has received the signed transaction and the network nodes are validating it, running it through the Hashgraph consensus algorithm and finally adding it to the blockchain. Finally, we use the get receipt method on the submitted transaction to obtain the transaction receipt. 
This transaction receipt will contain the status of the transaction. We're expecting a success status here as well as the ID of any entities created, in this case, the token ID. We extract this token ID from the receipt and print a Hashcan URL, Hashcan being the network explorer. Use command click or control click to open the token URL in a tab, in a new browser tab. In this new browser tab, we can see the hashcan.io slash testnet slash token followed by the token ID in the URL bar. This page shows us all of the properties of the token that we have just created using the token create transaction via the Hedera SDK in our script thus far. We see token HTS coin as a token name and token HTS in all caps as the token symbol. The treasury account is our operator account. The entire minted balance of 10,000 tokens has been sent to the operator account. Switching back to Gitpod in the terminal, we see that the script has also written an artifacts.json file to disk. This is not necessary in this task and is intended to be used in the interoperability task instead. So we'll come back to this later. In the next section, we'll configure token association. In EVM, when you have an ERC20 token, for example, you can transfer it to any account that you wish to, whether the recipient is aware of it or not. With HTS tokens, however, this is not the case. A recipient account essentially needs to whitelist or allow which tokens they wish to interact with. And this concept is called token association. We'll use the token associate transaction for this. This transaction is far simpler than the previous one, and we only need to configure two properties. Use the set account ID method to set the recipient account use the set token IDs method to set the token ID of the token that we have just created. Hit return to run this section. We print the transaction ID to the terminal. As before, we now have our local transaction ready to submit to the network. Hit return to run the section. Again, we'll, be, we'll begin by signing it using the private keys of the accounts involved then submitting it to the network and then awaiting a transaction receipt. This time, we only need one signature for the recipient account and thus call the sign method on the token associate transaction. The subsequent execute and get receipt methods follow the same pattern as before. We extract the transaction status and print it out. We also print the hashcan URL of the transaction. Use command click or control click to open the URL in a browser tab. In the new browser tab, we can see the hashcan.io slash testnet slash transaction in the URL bar, followed by the transaction ID. This page shows us all of the properties of the token associate transaction via the header SDK in our script thus far. We see the type as token associate and a status of success. Let's switch back to Gitpod. Our next task is to configure a token transfer. To do so, will use the transfer transaction from the Hedera SDK. If you've done an HBAR transfer before, you'll notice that this is the same transaction type for both tokens and cryptocurrency. Instead of calling the add HBAR transfer method, we'll use the add token transfer method instead. For each, we need to specify the token ID, the account ID or address, and amount. We use negative numbers for debited amounts and positive numbers for credited amounts. As long as the debits and credits add up to the same total and they tally for the same token, the transaction is valid. In this case, the operator account is the sender and the other account is the recipient. The amount is 100 and the re received amount of the same token is 100 as well. That tallies, so all good. Hit enter to run this section. This creates the transaction locally and we print out the transaction ID. As before, we now have our local transaction ready to submit to the network. Again, we'll begin by signing it using the private keys of the accounts involved and then submitting it to the network and then awaiting a transaction receipt. Hit return to run the section. We'll call the sign, the execute and the get receipt methods following the same pattern as before. 
We extract the transaction status and print it out. We also print the Hashcan URL of the transaction. Use command click or control click to open the URL in a browser tab. In the new browser tab, we can see the hashcan.io slash testnet slash transaction URL followed by the transaction ID. This page shows us all the properties of the transfer transaction via the Hedera SDK in our script thus far. We see the type as crypto transfer and a status of success. Under the transfer section at the bottom, you'll see HBAR transfers, which show the transaction fees being paid to the Hedera testnet, testnet network nodes. You'll also see token transfers, which shows that 1.00 of token HTS, in other words, 100 units with two decimal places, has been sent from the operator account to the other account. Let's switch back to Gitpod. We see that our token HTS task is complete. Congratulations on making it this far. Time to choose your own adventure. Click on one of the following videos linked on the screen or in the description once you have made your pick. If you have not done the HSCS token task next, I recommend doing that one next. Otherwise, I recommend doing the interrupt task next. Either way, see you in the next one.